MTD CNC have travelled to Nazing in Essex today. We're at Industrial Plastic Fabrication, where in April this year they took delivery of their first high-speed vertical machining centre, and it was a Fanuc Robo drill. You'll know Fanuc Robo drills for being small, high-speed, compact, precise machine tools. This is no different. However, they opted for the L version, which means they've got a much bigger working envelope. Let's get inside and have a look. Uh, Bill, thanks for the invitation here today uh, to your company. We've come here primarily to look at the installation of this new robo drill machine. Firstly, tell us when the machine landed here. It's about six months ago. Uh, and it's a pretty tight fit. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the ceiling there. Um, well, well, you've you not got much room for error. It, it was a little bit tight getting it in, but I must admit that's one of the reasons we chose the Fanuc because the dimensions were just going to work for us as well as giving us a, a fairly good working area. Uh, previously you were doing a lot of routing, that was what your kind of company right. may, may have been associated with some, on years gone by. You've now gone into the more high speed CNC machining. Um, what was the reason for the, for the venture into this uh, machine? Our, our customers started demanding sort of, uh, higher precision parts, better finishes. The type of work that we got involved with was just becoming altogether more sort of scientific and, and technical and it, routers just weren't going to do the job. So how did you find the actual robo-drill machine? Well, first of all, started off with our good friend Google. Uh, did plenty of research on machine types that were available. Um, I'd, always, I'd heard the Fanuc name, but I didn't know much about them. So made the, eventually tracked them down on Google, made an approach and... Um, you, ma you managed, you'd know about the control, but maybe you didn't know that they had the machine to back it up that, was, uh, that was, included the control as well. I think that's a fair comment. You know, I'd, I'd seen one at an exhibition a little while ago that had sort of piqued my interest, but hadn't really taken it any further forward. How fast is this machine, Bill? In comparison to what we was doing before, incredibly quick. You know, tool change, tip, uh, chip to chip, 1.3 seconds. You know, we've got 24,000 RPM spindle on there, so we, we can really churn th through the material. And as we're doing plastics, we need that high spindle speed and the high feed rates. You know, it really is a cut above what we was doing before. And so speed is one thing, but what about what you're actually making, the accuracy that you need to make it for? Because that was an influence as well, wasn't it, on your decision. Can you tell us about these parts? Well, the, these particular parts, we, in the past, we've made on, on routers, um, and th they've been perfectly good for the application, but there are many customers now demanding much closer tolerances, much finer surface finishes. And we also run diamond tooling on this machine as well to give us polished finishes straight off the machine. Uh, how much better is the finish using that tooling and this machine than what you were getting before on your other machines? Whereas previously it might have taken us several minutes to polish up a part, now we can take a part off. If it needs any polishing, it's literally a few seconds. With the installation of this technology as well though, Bill, you, you've not been used to a machining centre such as this. What was the learning curve like for you and your guys? It's been pretty quick because we've been used to machining plastics for many years and, and the changes that we made, because, well, actually there were very few changes. It was just really upping the, the, the feed rates because we, we, we'd, you know, we'd been used to working with high spindle speeds. Uh, what, what about things like coolant and stuff on these materials? Are you, are you using that? Because sometimes people cut the types of materials you do dry, but I notice it is wet in here. It, it gets very wet in there. Um, yeah, the, the coolant is actually giving us a far better surface finish and it's easy to wash, after, off, wash off afterwards. So. And is it, a high, is it a high pressure coolant that you use? We've got, yeah, high pressure coolant and we've got through spindle coolant as well. It also makes, keep, keeps the machine clean as well and it stops a lot of, lot of the clogging of contaminant material. That's right, yeah. It's, uh, it, it helps keep everything clean. Parts are coming off burr free, um, nice and clean. It really is the, the best way for us to go. Uh, some of the parts that you also do will, would lend themselves ideally to a five axis machine. You, you went straight for a three axis. Do you think that was the right decision for you? It was the right de decision for us at the time and it's still a fantastic machine. I can see us moving into five axis in the relatively near future though, because once you've improved on a standard of machine, your customers then come along and say, can you do this as well? and they're always looking for a progression and, and that's what we've got to sort of try and stay ahead of. And what about this control, touchscreen, uh, latest Fanuc series control? You, you have had Fanuc controls in the past but certainly not with this level of software on them. How have the guys taken to it? They love it. They've really taken to it well. Um, it's, it's the machine of choice to use in the workshop.